Okay, so hello everyone and thank you for joining us for Handmade Britain Online. Um, my name is Lucky and today we're being joined by Anelia Kukrina who is a designer jewelry maker. She's going to be uh, talking about some of her design methods and processes which she uses to make her beautiful bespoke pieces. If you have any questions, please, please, please use the chat box provided and we'll get through them during the show. Um, but for now, I'm going to hand it over to you, Anelia. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, so this is my first ever jewelry show. So I thought it would be nice just to introduce myself first because unfortunately we couldn't do it live. So we'll have to do it um, in the virtual format. Um, I'm Anira and I'm the designer and maker behind my little jewelry company. Uh, mostly I work with the fine jewelry and um, I think I think what's what really makes my jewelry different from anyone else is that uh, um, I use very different methods I used to work for many years in the traditional workshop settings and temporary uh, techniques because I think jewelry is very uh, interesting area alongside the very ancient techniques that they were used in the many centuries ago nowadays there are really high-end technology being brought into jewelry industry although like 3d modeling for example uh, card computer aided manufacture computer aided design and i love um, i love exploring the opportunities what it offers to us as a designers um i would be very happy to answer any of your questions if um just to let you know i have my jewelry here next to me that i can show you or maybe if you've seen something on the website they, they're all quite delicate pieces so um oh yeah carol hello <laughs> yes so you know I'm, i'll be very glad to show you maybe against myself just to get the uh feel of the scale also i have my selection of earrings here so i have them in gold i've got a couple of silver pieces as well yeah unfortunately they i can't really make them really sharp but they're here if you want if you want me to show them and uh yeah and uh some more pieces so i've got a couple of rings this is a little prototype that i'll talk about in a minute <laughs> and then i've got this lovely beautiful bangle that probably would be the product that you can see uh you know properly that's an oval shaped bangle it's really cool it's so comfortable and also like when you wear it it has no clasps no catches it's just continuous bangle so when you put it on it sits quite tight on your wrist. Okay, I'll have to hold it further away. So it kind of follows Amelia, the shape. Sorry, I'm just going to jump in here. Um, I've got a yes. question. Um, so which which piece takes the longest to create? You know, the bangles, the rings? Aha, uh -huh. okay, that's a good question. Uh, right, it a lot depends on the piece. Uh, of course, the larger the scale is, the longer time it takes. But also you have to think of uh, how detailed the piece is, how much different elements in this piece. So for example, I can show you these earrings. They took me absolutely ages because they are uh, handmade from scratch, from the recycled gold. So that was starting like from, okay, maybe if I hold against me, against my dark jumper. Um, they took me very long time because it's a lot of solders here a lot of different elements that i had to join together um so i would say it's both you know if it's uh, you need to think about the size and about the details in the piece uh also i'm wondering whether people ever consider the design process that goes into that piece you know rather than just looking at the manufacturing oh thank you very much <laughs> thank you um yeah, uh, because that's something that clients very rarely take into their account. But it's not just in jewelry, but in other, I'm sure other designers in other areas, they experience the same uh, very, very long term 
uh, sort of development process of their ideas. For example, uh, many, some of the pieces that you've seen on my um, Handmade in Britain website, they are uh, part of my Asta collections that are, uh, it's a new collection. I haven't showed it anywhere. I have been thinking about it for a long time. Uh, and maybe I can just talk you through a little bit how it all came to life. Um, so the Asta collection, it's all started actually just with a piece of old silver wire, believe it or not. It was nothing more than that. Um, I was working on something else and uh, I was cutting it into very, very thin pieces. And then I thought they're just so amazing. They create beautiful illusion of like spatial prototype I've been making by hand. And, and uh, it took forever. It took absolutely forever. You know, put, if you imagine putting, okay, I've got a printout. It's kind of like a computer generated image, but I'll just show you because you can see better. So my initial test piece, it was just those separate cut wire elements that I had to join together and sold it together. I still have it laying around in my workshop somewhere, but that was the prototype. And then I thought, you know what, that's just brilliant. I have to, I have to make it work uh, in terms of like uh, production time and, you know, maybe to explore it a little bit more. And so that's why I went to, um, to the computer manufacturing. I actually, I did it before. I use it occasionally along my other techniques in my practice because I love, I love the, the opportunities to offer you to explore because even although I have a deep admiration for a handmade, truly handmade pieces, um, I think that just offers you extra, extra dimension to what can be done with the metal. So then I started modeling, like you can see, just two basic blocks, uh, just like, like my, my overlay, exactly the same what I had. And so then I started just playing around and arranging them in different way. So from which came like a small little gold earrings, like Asta earrings, it's like this pattern. Okay, it's not very clear, but, and um, yeah, and also because if you imagine how long it would take me to cut every together that would take a crazy amount of time and I just wanted it to, to be a little bit more playful so uh lucky please stop me because I can just talk non-stop for hours if you no, have any no, questions it's or if you have you're fine you do great it's actually really interesting <laughs> fantastic yeah um, thank can you, you show us some of um, your rings is there any way you can show show us some of your rings on your fingers yes so yes of see? course yes so for the show I just had two rings i'm not sure if you can see them still like my light is on a ring uh okay on the on the photograph it looks a lot clearer <laughs> but you can get the feeling you know for the scale it is sterling silver it has been made from a recycling sterling silver 100 percent handmade that's like uh you know making a collet and everything it's got beautiful beautiful blue topaz there and um, see that around the shoulders. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I can't really zoom it in a little bit more. Uh, but it is incredibly comfortable on. I've got a really Fiona's fingers, so <laughs> I don't really wear a ring. Uh, yeah, but it looks stunning. She's just so clean and mirror polish. And I think it's very but at the same time it's so wearable because my jewelry piece is being worn like every day uh, of course you know I probably made some pieces that are just for special occasions but I love to see people wearing my pieces that's that's main reason why I'm making them uh, also I have this is also like part of my exploration into the um, oval sort of shapes so this is like oval wire I'm using it's really delicate again that's like a very very minimalistic ring Oh, I'm sorry you can't see it. Right. Okay, right. So, yeah, I'm so, sorry, Lucky. You know, that's just what my camera is not picking up on these little, little things. But it, it has... Uh, so, essentially, that's like three different bands put together. And then uh, they're sort of assembled in a Z shape. 
So when you're wearing it on your finger, it looks, you can, you can wear it as a, so it looks like one ring, or I think mostly it looks like three different rings you're wearing, but they are staying in the same place because they're soldered together. Uh, it's very light piece. It's really beautiful, really elegant. And again, that's just from the oval wire. Something drew, something drove me to that, and I've been just playing with it and trying different things because that bangle is also from an oval wire. And uh, yeah, that's that takes some time to 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 polish and finish. So um, question, sorry, I'm going to jump in again. <laughs> um, so how much how much are we looking at, and what's the price range for your jewelry? The price range I work with very different price range. Uh, so that that little gold ring that I showed you, it is nine carat recycled yellow gold. Of course, I can make it in other metals, but because it's quite light, it's you know I think it's very affordable. It's a nice little gift piece, so I can make it to any size. And the price for that in nine carat yellow gold, let me just check. That comes to one hundred and fifty pounds. Okay, and uh, I can make it in any metals. My my first ring that I was showing you. Sorry, I just kind of skipped it. <laughs> um, it's 450, 450 pounds. But again, I work a lot of for private commissions, for private orders. So if you have anything in your mind, I'll be very, very happy to help. Uh, and it just happened that, you know, people start approaching me mostly for the private commissions. So I have a quite diverse range of pieces. You can see them uh, on Handmade in Britain. Actually, I just, I think it's worth mentioning that uh, Handmade in Britain is the only place where you can buy my pieces as yet, because um, I haven't set up my workshop, my uh, website shop as yet. I don't know how long it's gonna take because I have got a few orders to get on with, but yet. So maybe I could just show you a few of my, of my sketches. Do you think it could be interesting, Lucky? I think that would be great. It would be really nice to see For your sketches. People to see? Yeah, because I like, um, I, I, I literally, I'm so uh, like broad in my discipline. I enjoy almost every part of it. So I do handmade drawings as well, like handmade sketches. Like this is just a pen drawing, uh, a design for the earrings that maybe I'll make one day, but I just love drawing the facets, uh, drawing the different shades. Uh, then usually it starts, you know, it can be quite a freehand drawing or it can be more precise depending on the purpose of what I'm trying to achieve with that. So I've got another sketches here. You can see they're more basic, uh, but also, you know, they're quite arty, they're quite freehand. Uh, when I come to working with a uh, with a private commission, you know, of course you would want to show your clients uh, more exact details because that's what I find the most challenging for people, but also the, my main responsibility is to help them to visualize what they have in their mind. That's not easy. If you don't do jewelry every day, I can totally relate, you know, how, how difficult it can be for people. So I would try to make it as precise as possible, okay? So that, for example, was a sketch for the ring for one of my clients. So you can see all different views. So the person know exactly what they're gonna get in the end. Um, yeah, or just something like that, something more basic. It's just a pencil. I don't know if you can see it very well. Yeah, okay. That's really beautiful, Anemia. Uh, one more question. Um, so if, if someone has a design idea, you know, when you're talking to your clients, so what is the process? How do you create, you know, a piece that's kind of customized towards the client's taste? That's a lovely process. <laughs> okay, so the first thing is, I would try to get as much information from the client. Uh, it is difficult because sometimes people, they, they're not sure what they want. But even if they let me know what they don't like, that also helps me a lot because then, you know, we can um, exclude the, uh, you know, designs that are not, not of their interest. But we will do a bit of research. It depends on the request of the client as well because what happens, sometimes people have their uh, old jewelry pieces, you know, maybe that they inherited uh, with the old stones, like beautiful stones that you can't find maybe even nowadays. But, uh, you know, the design looks quite outdated and, you know, that piece just sits in the jewelry drawer, jewelry box, which is really sad. So, you know, we can take the stone out and we can work around. Uh, but yeah, first, the first stage would be uh, for me to understand, um, for me it would be to understand what 
what the client is what, what clients likes uh, i usually offer quite a lot quite a lot to select from to start with and then we gener uh, gradually narrowing the ideas down uh, i don't mind to exploring a little bit more because that really gives me a better understanding of my client wants uh, okay, it looks like we are running out of time. I barely started. <laughs> but uh, yes, thank you very much for coming and for people who joined the video today. And maybe I hope I'll meet you again. And please remember that tomorrow is the last day of the Handmade in Britain. And after that, I'm going to hide my pieces for a little while. Brilliant. <laughs> thank you so time. much. Annie. That was great. That was fantastic. Thank you so much for you know going into depth and those lovely sketches. I mean, how much time it to to create a piece is, is phenomenal um so that that is amazing um yes. thank you for everyone who joined us it was great to see you guys um and please 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 feel free to stop by anita's shop you can uh have a one-on-one -on -one chat with her if you have any questions you can ask her directly so head over to her shop anita kapuna 